Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Captain Marvel gave the Avengers their namesake, Nick Fury is Patch, and Spider-Man Far From Home it's bonkers post credit scene. When this movie came out, I think we were all just itching to get to Avengers Endgame, but this Infinity Saga rewatch of Carol Danvers' pre-haircut days turned up a lot of interesting visual details and connections to other MCU films that I missed the first time around. So let's re-break this down. The Marvel Studios title card is a loving tribute to Stan Lee, this being the first MCU film to release after his death. His many forms and his many creations make him the true Avenger that made this cinematic universe possible. Stan cameos later on the train. Trust me, true believer. Trust me. He's reading the script for Kevin Smith's Mall Rats, since this is set in 1995 when Stan made one of his best cameos. All the money, all the women, even all the comic books in the world, they can't substitute for that one person. I don't know, all the comics in the world. Trust me, true believer. One girl who got away is Carol Danvers here. But on a deeper level, it's also the core drive for Avengers, like Captain America and Endgame. When Kevin Smith saw Stan reading this line in Captain Marvel, he immediately remembered the Mallrat scene's deeper meaning and was brought to tears. The film opens with Carol's fractured memory of her crash origin, doctored to render her blood blue and the hazy threat a dirty scroll. But already, we feel like there's something off about this. It's because Carol's story is really about memory. They say that when we remember something, we're actually remembering how we felt the last time we thought about that event. An echo of an echo. Memory is subjective. Our minds are constantly reframing our pasts, however, they'll strengthen us for our present battles. Carol's memory has been falsified to make her a stronger Kree, so she must reclaim her narrative to make herself a better human. The planet Hala is introduced with these coordinates using the production design from the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, along with the hexagonal Universal Neural Teleportation Network and Peter Quill's translator implant, which Carol also has. Do you understand me? Is my universal translator working? They designed the Kree skyscrapers with a T shape, and down below there's a structure with 10 pillars. There are also 10 pillars on the sanctum of the Supreme Intelligence, I assume it represents the ten pillars of why the Kree are pricks. Now I have other matters to attend to. Prick. And the T-shape stands for t -t -t time for Carol to leave? The train level of Hala features some anti-scroll propaganda, another hint of the Orwellian undertones or overtones of the Kree society. Never a good sign when there are freaking billboards that say, watch out for this race. The big brother of this society is the AI Supreme Intelligence. Has anyone ever seen what the Supreme Intelligence really looks like? No one can look upon the Supreme Intelligence in its true form. Yeah, that sounds very great and powerful Oz to me. This is an emerald city of lies. Like the false perception green tinted glasses of Oz, they use green eyes to mark the false projection of the trusted figure Marvell, aka Wendy Lawson. But Carol's actual memories reveal the real Marvell did not have this eye color. Jan Rog tells his team, "We must all be ready to join the collective, if that is our fate today." Later, Talos eulogizes his dead scroll friend differently. Safe journey to the beyond, my friend. When the Kree die, they assimilate into a collective, their souls conforming in solidarity. But when the Skrull die, they drift outward into the beyond. It's a nice contrast between the conforming fascist Kree versus the roaming refugee Skrulls. The Skrulls scan Carol's memories with Maria Rambeau call sign Photon, a nod to her daughter Monica Rambeau, adult version joining the MCU in WandaVision, who becomes the hero of Photon, aka Pulsar, and most importantly, another version of Captain Marvel. The asshole pilot who bullies her in her memory is briefly shown in the background of the Kree sparring room exactly where Carol looked up at Yon Rog. A clue to her here that Yon Rog is actually another oppressive authority figure that she shouldn't trust. Now there's this brief shot of a burning piano. The story behind this is pilots will burn pianos as a way to honor pilots that they've lost. A tradition that dates back at least to World War II, maybe earlier. According to some legends, RAF pilots burned a piano to honor a piano plane pilot who would play no more. In this case, it's a kind of meta tribute to Thunderbird pilot Major Stephen Cajun Del Bagno, who died in a crash shortly after consulting on this film. He and fellow consultant Major Matt Kimmel cameo at the pool table in the Poncho's Bar memory, and the credits make the whole film out to Del Bagno's memory. Another memory, Carol stargazes with Monica, and there's a shooting star, which I have speculated might have been Yondu's ship taking off since this would be around 1988 and Louisiana isn't that far from Missouri where Quill was abducted. Carol nicknames Monica. Prepare for takeoff, Lieutenant Trouble. 
In the comics, Carol gives the nickname Lieutenant Trouble to Kit Renner, a Captain Marvel fan who helps her recover from amnesia, as Monica does in this movie. Her memory of Wendy Lawson loops back on itself, with Lawson leaving frame in the same shot that Carol whip pans over to see Lawson walking back in. Doctor Strange used a similar disorienting camera trick when Strange tortured Dormammu with the same kind of time loop, so they keep the camera rolling within this impossible loop to convey that bewilderment from that perspective. In Blockbuster, remember that? Carol says, Beers to Star Force Command. Do you read me? It's a nod to Buzz Lightyear and Toy Story, which also came out in 95 when a similarly confused crash landed space ranger makes a similar distress call. Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. Come in, Star Command. Carol picks up the movie The Right Stuff, which is the famous film about test pilots, as she and Maria were. She blasts a standee for true lies, burning off the head of Arnold's character, who is a spy who deceived his wife who then becomes the badass, parallel to how Jan Rog deceived Carol, but then she ends up being the badass. The security guard, Barry, is actually a cameo by Barry Curtis, Marvel's longtime security guy who works his ass off to try to prevent spoiler leaks by the cast. Is Barry gonna be mad at me? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I would. Just look how mad Barry is. Now, four scrolls arrive on the beach. Talos is their leader. Scroll number two impersonates Coulson, and he dies in the car crash, later gets autopsied. Scroll number three is Talos's science guy, who gets killed by Jan Rog. Now, scroll number four is the one Carol chases on the train and gets away. My old scroll search series on the channel went into some possibilities of whatever happened to this fourth scroll. I'll have some more thoughts on it at the end of this video. The posters by the payphone include ones for the 90s Rock the Vote campaign and Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy, and the Infinite Sadness, which might be a nod to Brie Larson as Envy Adams and Scott Pilgrim vs. the world, which was adapted from the comics, in which her character debuted in an issue titled The Infinite Sadness. She tells Jan Rog that she's on C-53. Yes, where are you? I'm on planet C-53. The squirrels are looking for someone named Lawson. He is freaked out because she is back on her home planet and she's about to find out how he lied to her. S.H.I.E.L.D. agents young Nick Fury and young Coulson try to handle this situation. Did you see her weapon? I did not. Not very good at faking surprise at this alien weaponry because Coulson here is actually Skrull said. The squirrel helps the old lady that he impersonates off the train. Carol runs into her as well, showing how she recognizes this squirrel as an imposter. Her glasses fly off, but she doesn't need them, as Talos explains later. You know, I don't really need these to see, but they do kind of complete the look. Now, when they hold her back, there's a passenger in a suit. He looks different between takes. That's because the earlier shot is an extra, but in the close-up, the guy who ends up getting hit is this movie's fight coordinator, Walter Garcia, who had to dress up as the original extra when they went back to reshoot the scene. Skrull changes into the guy in the red sweater, who reacts confused, doing a real solid job conveying how Korath described this feeling. It was deeply disturbing. Why? Because I stared into the face of my mortal enemy, and the face staring back was my own enemy. Before we continue, thanks to Bang Energy for sponsoring this video. Every can of Bang is 16 ounces, it contains 300 milligrams of caffeine, it's sugar-free, and it has zero calories, yet it tastes great. I definitely winced when I opened it, because I'm so excited. Yeah, there's over 20 different flavors to choose from. This one is their Black Cherry Vanilla. It's like all my favorite flavors in one can that gives me so much energy. Whenever I'm feeling sluggish, a can of one of these guys helps pick me up so I never have to blink again. Oh crap, I just did. I gotta chug some more. Never blink. Check out Bang on Instagram. You can get 25% off your order at bang-energy.com and use the code NEWROCKSTARS25. There you can buy cans of Bang Energy, including their sweet tea and keto coffee flavors. You can also get clothing, fitness supplements, all kinds of stuff to be your best Bang self. Thanks again to Bang Energy for sponsoring this video. Get 25% off at bang-energy.com using the code NEWROCKSTARS25. And when Carol gets off the train, there's a quick cameo by Captain Marvel comics writer, Kelly Sue DeConnick. At the computer bar, Carol researches Pegasus and the search results bring up the mythological Pegasus setting up Valkyrie's steed in Endgame. There's also a listing for the Disney film Hercules, but hey, that didn't come out until 1997. Come on! The Skrull autopsy was inspired by a memorable moment in the Secret Invasion comics. And the medical examiner here is actor Nelson Franklin, who also appeared on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as Agent Steve Wilson at the ATCU. And Entity that deals with inhumans. At Poncho's Bar, the Street Fighter 2 game shows M. Bison doing his Psycho Crusher move, which, if you think about it, is similar to the way Captain Marvel goes binary and supercharges her whole body through a ship to blow it up, suggesting she might have gotten the idea for that move from playing this game. The walls are covered in plain photos, including one that people thought was the Valkyrie from the first Captain America movie, but it's actually the YB-49, which was built after World War II. Come on, folks, it's an Air Force bar. They're not going to hang up a Hydra plane on the wall, unless they've been corrupted too. 
Nick Fury fills her in on his past as a spy. Where? It was the Cold War. We were everywhere. Uh, Belfast, Bucharest, Belgrade, Budapest. I like the bees. I can make them ride. Budapest is going to be a setting in the upcoming Black Widow film. Maybe we might see a Nick Fury cameo, or at least his old safe house. Bucharest was where Bucky was hiding in Civil War. Well, we saw Fury could have been helping him out with his old contacts. The MCU has filled Fury's past with these B locations, as we found out in Winter Soldier. That photo was taken five years after Nick and I met, when I was at State Department in Bogota. And at the end of Winter Soldier, you can see he has a Thai work permit suggesting maybe work in Bangkok. Fury also reveals his infamous toast-cutting pet peeve. Name a detail so bizarre a scroll could never fabricate it. A toast is cut diagonally, I can't eat it. And again, I gotta set the record straight about Age of Ultron, where many of you keep tweeting me, claiming that you can see Fury cutting coast diagonally, calling this scroll evidence, but no. Trust me, I've watched that scene so many times, gone through it frame by frame. I deserve a doctorate degree in this. Fury definitely cuts that bread, and it's not toast, it's bread. He cuts it at a 90 degree angle. There are four sides, four corners. It is not diagonal. Fury also makes a big point about his name. Nicholas Joseph Fury. You have three names? Everybody calls me Fury. Not Nicholas, not Joseph, not Nick. Just Fury. Which is how he knows that his boss is actually Talos. Excellent work, Nicholas. More on how this could explain what really happened to scroll number four at the end of the video. Fury's ID lists his birthday as July 4th, just like Steve Rogers. And currently he is shield level three, since this is early in his career. Later, he will rise to clearance level 10. Fury used the old get the thumbprint on tape and put it on the door scanner trick that Scott Lang used to infiltrate Hank Pym's mansion. Fury also says, Oh, you should see what I can do with a paperclip. Now, he probably doesn't mean it this way, but Operation Paperclip was how Arnim Zola ended up working for and infiltrating S.H.I.E.L.D. So really, S.H.I.E.L.D. used Paperclip to undermine itself. Goose the Cat, or we should say Goose the Flurkin, was named Chewy in the comics. The name Goose is a nod to Maverick's co-pilot in Top Gun. And when they find the classified records, you can start to see the big reveal from the end of the movie, Carol's call sign, Avenger. It's obscured here, though. And they end up escaping in a quad jet. This is a predecessor to the Quinjet that the Avengers would later use. Actually, the coordinates on the controls are the same coordinates as the Quinjet's heading when they take Cap to the Helicarrier and Avengers. I'm just guessing they reused the set piece. As we saw in Ant-Man the Wasp, they don't really design these cockpits that well. Fia cow! Our pal Ronan appears. Ronan, the accuser from Guardians of the Galaxy, is not yet that crazy. But later on, he will be joined by Korath, who shows up in this movie. At the end of the film, he says, We'll be back for the weapon. The core. The woman suggesting that there will be more to this backstory between the films, and that perhaps will get explored in Captain Marvel 2, coming July 2022. At the Rambeau farm, they join up with Talos, who sips the same kind of fast food cup as the big kahuna burger cup that Sam Jackson drinks out of in Pulp Fiction. Talos recognizes Goose as a flurkin, and he freaks out the way Rocket does when he calls out the flurkin in the comics. But Goose rubs against his legs, leaving the scent, which is how Goose recognizes Talos through his Kree disguise later on. After learning the truth, Carol changes her Kree suit color scheme. She says, Nope, to red and gold. Either a joke about this being the color scheme of Shazam, the character Marvel Comics took the name Captain Marvel from originally, or it could be a meta joke about how red and gold has already kind of been taken in the MCU by Iron Man. But she also tries out this green and white scheme, which is the original Kree colors of Marvel in the comics. Yon Rog tells the science guy, Skrull, that Carol's Kree blood transfusion came from him, meaning he was behind her memory wipe. Now, this is the same process Nick Fury will use to revive Coulson and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. after his death in Avengers. Kree blood, memory wipe, maybe Fury learn this is possible from what happened to Carol Danvers. The Squirrel Lightspeed Engine's energy core was, of course, the Tesseract. Meaning that after Howard Stark recovered it from the ocean floor in the 40s, he must have handed it off to S.H.I.E.L.D. Project Pegasus in the 80s, and then it stayed with the Skrulls in the 90s, and then with Goose and with Fury until the Avengers. They get captured and Carol gets trapped with the Supreme Intelligence, and she revisits all of her memories of her past failures, including one where she plays baseball with a team named Sparrows, which was the call sign Brie Larson was given when training with the Air Force pilots. But in this moment, Carol reframes the echoes of echoes into aligned moments when she rose back to her feet. She reclaims her memory as a weapon to strengthen herself. She removes her Kree inhibitor ship and she goes binary. She tells Fury, Take the Tesseract, leave the lunchbox. It's a nod to the famous Godfather line, Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Juice swallows the Tesseract. It's a callback to Bruce Banner's line in Avengers. This is the Tesseract. It has the potential energy to wipe out the planet. What does Fury want me to do, swallow it? 
They use the empty Fawn's lunchbox as a misdirect, just like how the Guardians of the Galaxy used a container to misdirect Yondu from that Infinity Stone's real location. Now, there's a great moment here. Carol looks down at the Fawn's lunchbox, and no doubts, I'm just a girl kicks in, right as she blasts Bronchar into the jukebox, echoing when she blasted the jukebox in the bar earlier. This is all a nod to the way the Fawn's and Happy Days could punch the jukebox and play whatever song he wanted. She has Fawn's power now. Now, in addition to the big reveal of Goose the Flurkin, being a nod to the way Men in Black hides a whole galaxy on the cat's collar, and that movie being a whole alien conspiracy story, this final battle echoes another mid-90s sci-fi film, Independence Day. There's a dogfight through the canyon, and Carol ends up dragging Yonrog through the desert to welcome him to Earth, like Will Smith to that alien. And now, here, she stands over him with a light casting him in shadow, a reversal of the way that he stood over her and let her in shadow back on Hala. And the music here may sound familiar to you. This music is a leitmotif to Captain America's theme, the music of his longing for Peggy. But you'll notice the fourth note of Carol's theme diverges from what you would expect, reflecting how this Avenger diverges from that first Avenger. Steve Rogers was always trying to get back to the woman of his past. This Avenger wants to move on from the man of hers. Goose scratches Nick Fury's eye. Oh. Scarring his eye with the permanent unique damage that he uses to save S.H.I.E.L.D. from Hydra's clutches in Winter Soldier. You need to keep both eyes open. Or did he really save S.H.I.E.L.D.? I guess not, but, but he saved us. Talos tells Fury, I could go back to being your boss. A hint that these two will continue to work together in a tandem partnership, which was revealed in Spider-Man Far From Home. Talos' wife Soren here disguises herself as Maria Hill. And again, there was that long lost missing scroll number four. Now, I believe that he could have continued on Earth as a close confidant of Fury and of Hill, maybe doubling up as either one of them whenever they need him to. That might explain why Fury throughout this cinematic universe has allowed himself to be called Nick in various instances. Those hostages could have died now. Nick, Nick, Nick. Carol upgrades Fury's pager. For emergencies only, okay? Explaining the backstory of Fury's pager in the Infinity War post credit scene, which returns in this movie's post credit scene where Carol joins the Avengers. Where's Fury? This moment was Brie Larson's first time on any Marvel set, and she said that when she shot this, she was just alone with green screens and tape, and she was never told which actors she would be in the scene with, which is why she looks a little confused here. Makes sense. The final scene reveals that Nick Fury's Avengers initiative that he pitched to Tony Stark was inspired by Carol Danvers' pilot call sign. Fury learned from Carol how, for heroes, memory can be a very powerful tool. The way the Kree reframed Carol's memories to turn her against the scroll enemy, Fury does reframe the Avengers' memories about Coulson, which is a bit deceitful. Because yeah, memory is subjective. It's an echo of an echo that our minds repackage as a motive to keep us fighting on. As long as those memories are weaponized to fight the good fight, that's what's important. And that call of the Avengers began right here. Avengers Endgame is our next breakdown on this channel, and as our Discord MCU rewatch comes to an end, we are actually gonna move forward with new films, voted on by you guys to be Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. So you can join us on Discord if you haven't already by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash newrockstars. Follow me on Instagram at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe. Yeah, I can ask you to subscribe all day. Yeah, I know. I know.